Good evening, CCA family. I'm so glad we get to be together today. Thank you so much for tuning in to our chapel service. Uh, as you can see, the settings changed a little bit. Um, we are actually at CCA today. I've been doing some filming projects here, and so all of the gear was here, and so decided to set up here. You'll also notice that I'm flying solo today. Um, my wife owns her own business, and during this season, work has been uh, a little more scarce, and so she actually was able to get a big project, and so, uh, but there's kind of a short timeline on it, so she's working on that today, and I'm blessed. We are blessed that she's, uh, she's got some work, so as, as those of you that, um, that have work or don't have work in this season, you know that work, um, work is a blessing. I don't know, students, that might be a bit of a weird phrase, but trust me, work is a blessing to be able to uh, provide for the people that you love, be able to um, be able to serve them in that way. It's a big deal. So, um, so it's just going to be me today, but I hope that's okay. Uh, we're going to uh, gather together and sing. So if you can, stand up. Let's sing loud. Let's celebrate this God who has made a way for us where it seemed like there was no way.
quietly to yourself. Just thank God. Thank God for all the times where he could have been distant and he wasn't. For all the times that he could have abandoned us and he didn't. For all the times that he was faithful. Let's just take a minute. Just take a minute. CCA family, so glad we get to get, be together today celebrating Jesus, celebrating what he's done in our lives and the way that we get to live, not have to live, the way that we get to live in light of his salvation. So I'm excited to be with you today. Uh, the reading's going to be out of John 20 today, but before we read that, let's go ahead and make our beginning in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Out of John 20, starting in verse 19. Still celebrating this Easter season, still celebrating the way that Jesus made his declaration that he was victorious over the grave. And uh, some of the interactions after his resurrection are pretty amazing. And so that's this is one of those stories. Uh, starting in verse 19, reading out of the uh, ESV. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews... Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said, 
to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Jesus and Thomas, their interaction, starting at verse 24. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the marks of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and by believing, and that by believing you may have life in his name. So this is the story. This is the story that historically we get the phrase doubting Thomas from. So the other 11 disciples, Jesus shows up to them and declares who he is and and interacts with them, uh, says, peace be with you. So he's speaking peace over this crazy situation. Remember, uh, they weren't exactly sure what was going to happen because the, their leader, the guy that they were following, had just been crucified. And so they and they weren't sure what was going on. There was still some question as to whether or not he was actually risen. And so they uh and so they're kind of they're actually in hiding they're like not really not sure what to do because i mean if the leader of your movement gets killed th those of you that those of you following that leader you start to question your safety level right so you're like okay we're gonna back it up so that's why they kept meeting in locked doors and it actually says that line for fear of the jews because they were they were genuinely afraid and so what is the first thing jesus does jesus says peace be with you Peace be with you. I'm here with you. Don't be afraid. Don't don't be nervous. Don't focus in on. Don't be in anxiety. Um, peace be with you. And so, just as uh, just as like an opening point to this, I just want to recognize the parallels we're living in right now. Um, these guys were locked in a in a room for fear of what was outside getting in and messing with them. We, in a lot of ways, are locked in rooms or locked in houses for fear of what is outside getting in and messing with us. And I want you to know that even in the space you're in, even in your locked down house, Jesus can still just show up. Jesus doesn't care about locked doors. Jesus doesn't care about quarantine. He's just going to step right in the middle of your business and say, peace be with you. So I just want you, to, I, as we're getting started today, I just want to say, Peace be with you in the name of Jesus Christ. He's right in your space today. He's right in the middle of it. He's not held back by locked doors. He's not held back by quarantine. He is there for you. That's why we just sang that song. Not for a moment will you forsake me. That's that declaration of his faithfulness and his goodness. So they have this amazing experience with the Lord. He comes into their space and they receive peace and they receive the Holy Spirit. And then we see Thomas with this interaction, because Thomas was a follower of Jesus, just like the rest of them, but they didn't get, he didn't get that same experience. He wasn't with them when Jesus showed up. He's like, no, 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 no. I, I was following Jesus. Like, I was in. I was in. And I, 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 and I saw what happened. So I'm, I'm not going to just jump in on a whim. If I am going to follow Jesus, I need to know that it's really Jesus. I need to know for myself that it's really Jesus. And so we see him kind of wrestling with his faith because I think Thomas wants to believe, but I don't think Thomas wants to, I think Thomas is like, okay, I, I saw this went once. I need to know this is for real. I need to know this is for real. Man, we're at CCA, the bells are ringing. Um, so I need to know. I need to know that this is really Jesus. So later Jesus comes in and he invites Thomas 
into that moment. He invites Thomas into that moment of saying, Thomas, I know what your faith needs right now. See, that's the thing I think that we struggle with sometimes is that we feel like there's kind of this prerequisite level of faith that we just have to function at or else God's going to stand back and sort of judge us. And, and I need you to know that that's not what we see Jesus displaying here in this text. We see a Jesus that comes into the space, that comes into the chaos and the mess and the fear and the doubt, and he says, this is the thing that your faith needs right now to believe in me. And so Thomas isn't able to make that step. He isn't able to make that step of just believing. He's not there. So Jesus takes the step for him. Jesus steps into his space, steps into this locked room, again, through locked doors, and comes right up to Thomas and says, Thomas, here, check out the nails. Check out the holes where the nails were. Touch my side. It's me. Do you believe? And he said, and now, Thomas, this declaration, my Lord and my God. So Thomas is believing now. And Jesus makes this interesting statement. He says, do you believe because you have seen? Blessed are those who have not seen and still believe. And so, family, I want to encourage us today. That's us. That's where we're living right now. We're in these locked rooms, and we, we're kind of like Thomas. We're like, we haven't seen we haven't seen Jesus with our own eyes. We have evidence, and there's faith, and we have the Word and all these things that testify to who He is. But we're, we're in this place where it's like we haven't seen, but we, we want to believe. And so I need you to know that, I, I mean, <laughs> Jesus, I, I don't believe that Jesus is physically going to show up in your house. He might. He might. <laughs> um, that is not outside of the realm of possibility for what he can do. Um, but I want you to know that wherever your faith is at today, wherever your faith is at today, Jesus knows exactly where you're at. He knows exactly what you're dealing with, and he knows exactly what your faith needs today. So I want to encourage you that in these moments where we feel like, man, I just, we almost feel like we have to create a lot because a lot of the structure and a lot of the things that we normally do has been removed. We talked a little bit about that in previous weeks. I feel like we have to kind of create a lot. Jesus is saying, I'm still in the business of building faith. I'm still in the business of creating faith. So we can put our trust in him. We can put our trust in him and believe that he is going to be faithful to his own word and faithful to his people. And he's going to meet us right where we're at, just like he did with these disciples, these guys that have been with him for the last three, three years, walking and talking and experiencing life together. He shows up right in the middle of their business, right in the middle of their fear, right in the middle of their anxiety, and he declares, peace be with you. So, CCA community, I pray that that's the declaration of the Lord in each one of our homes today, is peace be with you. And for those of us that are struggling with doubt, for those of us that are struggling with fear and anxiety, I believe that Jesus knows exactly what we need. And I believe that he is going to meet each one of us right where we're at. And he's going to build our faith because that's, what's he, that's what he is in the business of doing is building the faith of his people. Uh, I love, yeah. I'm living proof of that. I'm living proof of Jesus building the faith, building faith in his people. And, and so many of you that have a testimony of the goodness of God, you could say the exact same thing, that I am living proof that God builds the faith of his people. So I'm blessed. I'm blessed to be one of those people, and I know many of you are. And uh, for those of you struggling um, Jesus sees and he knows and he hasn't gone away. He hasn't abandoned us in this. He's still with us. He's still for us. And we're going to continue to walk in that. And we're going to continue the, the faith that we have. We hang on to that and we believe that Jesus is going to give us what we need to build that. Amen. Amen. Well, I hope that word was encouraging to you. That word is encouraging to me because I'll, I'll be completely honest. I'm realizing just as I process through my days, that um, there will be things that will show up that actually produce grief in my heart because uh, things that should have happened didn't happen. Things that I thought were going to happen and I planned for and I looked forward to, they didn't happen. 
And uh, so I go through these processes of grief and doubt, and my heart wavers, and uh, Jesus meets me. It's funny, even as I was leading worship earlier, the Holy Spirit was ministering to my heart and reminding me of his faithfulness. And uh, I, didn't, I didn't know that was going to happen, but he knew what my faith needed. And so he met me right where I was. And I believe he's going to continue to do that for each and every one of us through the season. Amen. Well, thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part of this. I, I'd love to spend a few minutes just in prayer with you. So if you could stand up with me, let's pray. Let's spend a few minutes before the Father and um, and just ask, just ask for his goodness to be evident in our lives. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for who you are and what you do. And we thank you that you're not a distant God, but you're a God who sees, you're a God who knows, you're a God who is near. So God, we put our trust in you today. We put our trust in the God who sees and knows and is near. And we put our trust in the God who doesn't just expect us to create faith somehow, but a God who builds our faith, a God who gives us what we need to walk in faith. God, we thank you for your goodness in that. I lift up each and every one of our families, God, each and every one of the members of our community. I pray that you would bless them today, that their um, that that grace and peace would fill their homes, God, the same way that you declared peace be with you. I pray that you would make that same declaration in their homes. Peace be with you, each and every one, in each and every home, in each and every place. Um, God, for those working and those not working, we pray uh, safety and care over each and every one of them. God, we lift up our medical professionals, uh, first responders, those that are continuing to work in harm's way uh, in the midst of this virus. We pray that you would protect them, God cover them and watch over them by the power of your Holy Spirit. We lift up our elected officials. We pray that you would bless them and give them wisdom. We lift up Governor Inslee. We lift up President Trump. We lift up all the world leaders, God. We pray that you would lead them and guide them by your Holy Spirit, that they would humble themselves and pray and seek your face, God. Just like Second Chronicles says, God, that they would uh, that they would pursue you and understand that you are the true source of wisdom. So God, we, uh, we thank you and we, we rely on you and we declare our reliance on you today, God. Um, we admit it and we declare it that we absolutely, desperately need you today. So God, let that be our heart's position, a position of need and that that need would create capacity for us to then trust you and to lean into you today. And God, we all pray together the prayer that you pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen amen Amen. Well, uh, again, so glad we get to be together today. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day. You don't have to do this. There's no, uh, there's no box checking for you to be a part of our chapel. I'm just blessed that you do it. I'm blessed that you make time out of your evening on Tuesdays to come and join us here on Tuesdays at six on Facebook Live. I'm, I'm blessed. I'm blessed that you do it. So I hope it's a blessing to you. And again. If there's anything um, I can do uh, as far as formatting goes or um, anything that you think would be a blessing to our community, please e email me at nate.boyt at cca.tacoma.org. Please email me about that. I'd love to interact with you just about the, the shape and form of our chapel services Do it still in this format. Um, and again, those of you uh, that are interested in participating in chapel, I'd love to hear your prayers. I'd love to hear... You read scripture. I'd love to see your face. I'd love to hear you sing a song of worship to the Lord. Um, it, it, we're a community. We're in this together. And so I would be so blessed to hear from you and to know that you'd like to contribute to chapel in some way. So, And it, 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 it can be something that we do remotely. You don't even have to leave your house. If you have a iPad or a laptop or a cell phone or some way to capture your face and capture video, 
then we can make you a part of chapel. So I hope that some of you take me up on that this week. That would be awesome. Well, give me just one sec. I'm going to throw my guitar back on and we'll sing one final closing song about the amazing grace of the Lord. And then we'll close. God bless you. Let's all stand together for this final song. Everybody knows this one. Sing it loud. It's amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like bless you this week. What an amazing thing. I know that we say that in all of our gatherings, we say the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you, but think about that. 
Feel the weight of that this week. The Lord bless you. The Lord who held the earth in his hands and formed it with his spoken word and with his power. The Lord who holds the universe together. The Lord who became a baby and then died on a cross and then rose from the dead so that we might have salvation. That Lord, we're saying that Lord bless you. Man, walk in the joy of that this week. Walk in the joy of a blessing from the Lord himself. That's what he wants to give us. And that's what I, I pray that we walk in this week is the joy of knowing that we are blessed by the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Have an amazing week.